Challenge, not a crisis, his administration that is saying that. But look at the projected numbers of unaccompanied minors. The numbers are telling 117,000 projected, up from 33,000 fiscal year 2020. In light of what it takes to care for one child, and Lord knows I'm having enough trouble keeping tabs on one, much less 117,000 of them, how is this not a crisis? Well, and that's exactly it. I mean, under this administration, we're seeing the definitions of things changing so rapidly. We continually ask, who built the cages, Joe? And he never could answer that during the campaign. And now these aren't cages. These are uh, holding facilities and classrooms. But they're the exact same structures that Obama and Biden built years ago that they were so quick to criticize President Trump for. And the crazy part is, is that under this administration, we're seeing an America last policy. So kids that are here and whether it be California or Colorado or elsewhere, they're out of school. They can't go to school. But you know what they're doing for the illegal children that are coming across? They're in classrooms. They are actually getting an education. This is what is absolutely crazy to me. We have projected a weakness here at home and abroad, and that is why you're seeing this surge. We've seen the interviews where immigrants coming in this, this uh, caravan have said, President Biden's gonna take care of me. Right. That wouldn't happen under a strong, resolute president who put America first. This is insane. We have people here at home that we've gotta take care of first. Yeah, completing a Rubik's Cube is a challenge. This is a crisis. Meantime, House is poised to, yeah, House poised to vote for the For the People Act as early today. Here's some of the tent poles of that act. Address concerns of federal control of national elections, extending voting rights to felons, overhauling the Federal Election Commission, and modernization of voter registration. You call it a, quote, top-down power grab at our democratic election system. What happens if this becomes law? It's a disaster. There, there is no way to sugarcoat this bill at all. It is an absolute disaster. Lowering the voting age to 16 years old. Uh, last time I checked, 16 year olds were still eating Tide Pods. And making DC a state, absolute disaster that is designed to keep the Democrats in power for here evermore. And then making it so that people get a $25 voucher so they can donate that to campaigns, a six to one match on political contributions. The last time I checked, no one ever said there's not enough money in politics and campaigns. It was always what can we do to make it so that it was less money involved right. in, in campaigns and now they want to use your tax dollars to do it. This is a disaster. It is not for the people. This is for the politicians. And finally, we can't let you go without asking about my fraternity brother. Carly makes fun of me, implying that I played Pong with Dr. Seuss. We were there at Dartmouth at different times, but cancel culture coming for the good doctor. I mean, look, is this the tipping point? Or is this the beginning, just the beginning of cancel culture? You know, I've, I've said repeatedly in the last couple of weeks, look at where we are. We are now living in a time when a plastic potato toy is now offensive to people because of its quote unquote gender. And now we're banning Dr. Seuss? This is crazy. I, I have been encouraging my fellow colleagues, get every Dr. Seuss book you can, get on social media, and why don't we read some of these Dr. Seuss books on our social media channels in honor of Read Across America Week. This is insane. Cancel culture is out of control. And you know, I just spoke on a panel recently at CPAC talking about North Korea and their oppressive human rights. That's a place where they will cancel you permanently. And I would hate to see our country slipping into a, a socialist utopia where all of a sudden you're snitching on your neighbors and your family, right. you're canceling people because they don't agree with you. This is the tolerant left, as they like to call themselves. But we all know here in the real world that this is just censorship and cancel culture run amok. I mean, it's literally a day based around him. I said it yesterday. I'll say it to you. It's like taking the groundhog out of Groundhog Day. But who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> we know we'll have you back to talk about it. Congresswoman Kat Kamek, great to have you on a lot of topics. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Carly. And Dr. Seuss turned 107.